Hello everyone. We shall move on with the next topic. The topic name is HTML. So in this topic we have around six chapters. So we'll be learning about what is HTML, structure of HTML, HTML web page layout, doc type declaration, elements in HTML, and forms in HTML. So we shall move on to the first topic, first subtopic. HTML. Now what is HTML? HTML is standard markup language for creating web pages. So whenever you go and visit a website, usually it will be written in HTML. It is a standard language for creating web pages. You can write your content and you can display it on the web browser. So HTML stands for Hypertext Markup Language. This is not a programming language. This is a markup language. Right, it contains tags. As you can see, the second point, HTML describes the structure of a web page. Now, in the web page also, there's different structure available. For example, header, footer, navigation bars, containers. You have different structure for a web page. So this actually describes what is the structure of a web page. HTML tells the browser how to display the content. Now. What happens is, whenever a user wants to see a website, if it is written in HTML, he can just open the file and he can display it. Now it actually tells the browser to display the content. Now HTML elements are represented by tags. I told you earlier, this is a markup language. Since it is a markup language, you have around different types of tags available. Now we call it as tags, but if you are any using any programming language, it is called as the syntax or, or other things which are available. But in HTML, we call it tags. So in a future examples, we are going to see what exactly is tag. Now browsers do not display the HTML tags, but use them to render the content of the page. Now this is a big difference. Now what happens is whenever you write a content in a HTML file, when you use the tag, that tag is used to render the content of the page. The tag, the browser will not display the HTML tag directly on the screen. It will actually render the elements. Each tag has its own significance. Now, whatever content you put in that tag, that content will be rendered. The tag will not be displayed on the screen. In fact, the contents will be displayed on the screen. So this is about what is HTML. Now structure of HTML. Now what exactly is the structure of HTML? As you can see, I told you earlier, here we have different sections available. For example, doc type HTML. This represents that the document type is HTML. Now HTML. Now this is the beginning tag. We, if we are going to write the code, we have to use this HTML tag. Now this HTML tag is used to write the content. So this acts like a container and inside it we write all the contents. Now head, head is actually used as a, a metadata. It contains metadata which can be style details, scripts. Now all those things can be included in the head, head tag. Now usually the title will be there as you can see the title here. Uh, the, we, to close the tag we have to use backslash and then head the same tag name again so this closes the tag now body body section the actual content of the data is stored in the body section like this web page content goes here as you can see this is a structure of a html now to close a html tag backward slash and html so this is what is structure of html now we are going to see the structure of html in a code editor but there are different code editors available. Now I'm going to show you a code editor, which is actually flexible, which can be used in any number of programs, any type of programs, and it is most famous as well. So today we are going to use Visual Studio Code. Now where to find Visual Studio Code? You can follow me now. I'm going to show you how to find Visual Studio Code and how to download the Visual Studio Code to your system. So now to download the Visual Studio Code, you will have to go to Visual Studio website. So you can see, you can Google search it. You can find code.visualstudio.com. You can go there and you can just download for Windows. You can see for Mac, for Windows, for Linux. 
and other downloads you can see there are different whatever system you are using you can download to that system you can directly download it and directly install it so after installing visual studio code i'm going to show you the actual platform what is visual studio code and how how are the things in visual studio code before opening visual studio code you will have to create a new folder so i am in desktop now i'll go and create a new folder where i want to save my project so i'll give the project name as maybe demo so i have created a folder called demo now now what i'll do is i'll go and open visual studio code you can see visual studio code is open now so this is your home screen so now i will have to open that folder you can see a command here that is open folder when you click on it now when you go to desktop i i have created a folder called demo when i click on demo now there are no items but still i'm going to select that folder so whatever projects i'm going to do i'm going to save in this folder particularly so i've created a folder now as you can see there's a folder now right so inside a folder to create a new file you can see something called new file here when you click on new file here you can give a name maybe i'm going to give it as index.html for the first program so the file has been created now why why did i use visual studio code rather than any other things why because i will have to get the structure as i explained earlier i have to get the structure of the html now so to do that you can actually do it with two clicks now how you can actually put a exclamatory mark after exclamatory mark when you press tab the entire structure of the html will be displayed like this as you can see html language is equal to english doc type html describes that this is the document type of html head section is there title is there body section is also there so this is how you can get the structure of html directly exclamatory mark and a tab so you can get completely if you want to save it control s and you can save the file now what i'm going to do i'm going to see the output of this now before that you will have to install some some extensions i'm going to tell you what extensions you need first you will have to go to this extension bar when you go to this extension bar you can see you can search for extensions here now in this extensions i want you guys to search for open with live server so when you go there you can see live server right you can see this live server i have already installed it now you will get something called install just install the live server because we might require it in our future so after installing it you can go back to this file explorer and the file is here so what i'm going to do is i'm going to take the output of this to take the output of that what i'm going to do i'm going to right click here and i'm going to open with live server now why live server because i'm going to show you how now as you can see now the started it has been started now there's nothing inside because in body section we did not give anything but here you can see document the title name is document you can see the title name as document there so now if i want to change that i'll go back to visual studio code what i'll give i'll give it as tequid labs demo if i go back and save it you don't have to go and refresh it the live server will perform all the commands once you save the file the live server will run and you don't have to refresh the page for every output it automatically gets refreshed that is why we are going to use live server you can use you can see that tequid labs demo the title you can change the title there now i'll go back now what i'm going to do is i told you already i'm going to explain you this meta tag this is viewport content device width all these things are initial these are all available in the structure of the html right now learning about tags each of these tags has a structure for itself the tag names are not case sensitive it said says that you can use capital letters you can use lower case letters upper case letters it doesn't matter it is not case sensitive but to be good programmers to be good scripters we are going to use lower case as per standards now tag names are enclosed within a 
angle brackets i already showed you the tag names just like head body html once open the tags have to be closed and as a friend slash to perform a pair as you can see the slash here it is to close the tag it is to this is to open the tag and this is to close the tags right so i'm giving i'm going to give you an example now yeah so this is an example i showed you before now this tells the title and this closes the title so inside body i'm going to put something now what i'm going to put i'm going to just write something just like web page content displayed so if i do this and if i save this now i can go back and i can go back and i can see that web page content is displayed i don't have to refresh it correct so let us understand the contents of the tag itself now you can see here this tag name this is called as an element and whatever you write the content that is called as the content and for each for each element you have different attributes such as class equals big id equals 1 id equals 10 all those things these are called as attributes of a tag division is an element class equals big is an attribute and content is the hello here now html the container all the container all the content is enclosed within html tags at the beginning and end of the file so i told you already that html if you use html tag all the things inside that is like a content inside a html tag that means html is a container to store all the tags inside that html tag okay so now as you can see html tag displayed here this html tag and this closing html tag inside this there are so many contents with other tags as well so html acts as a container for other tags right now head now i told you already head tag contains metadata which can be style details script details or links to external sheets now style details script details links to external sheet we are going to deal that with, with that later but it contains all the metadata which are required for a web page to be displayed on the screen yeah as you can see head tag here we have given title hello from techwed labs the head tag title hello from techwed labs so this is the head tag and to close the tag we are going to use friend slash and close it now the output i already showed you it will be displayed something like this now here a web page is displayed why because i have given inside body i have given a web page but if i go to title hello from techwed labs the title of it is hello from techwed labs i just showed you the output before so now the body the content the body contains the actual data that has to be displayed on the web page now in addition it contains form related instructions in fact inside body there are few tags there are so many tags which are going to be applied for example paragraph aside footer all those things are actually inside the body tag to make sure it is very easy for us to understand so let us see what actually body does so body can you see the output body now what i'm going to do i'm going to go to my visual studio code and help you out with the outputs so i am in my uh, visual studio store edit editor now as you can see i have written something called web page content displayed i already showed you the output so you can actually do it like a paragraph as well using add a paragraph here just close this paragraph after the content and just save it once you save that if you see the output you can see the same is displayed it has not been changed it it actually takes it as a paragraph now right and you can go back and again you can give different commands inside the body after knowing about the body we will shall go into block elements now what is block elements block elements create a new line and occupy full width on a display window for example as you can see now inside the body there is something called division hello world paragraph and again a paragraph you can read the statement the block element will always start on a new line and take up the full width available stretches out to the left and right as far as it can no to actually do this what i'm going to do i'm going to take an example i'm going to show you the output of it 
so i'm in my code editor now so i'm going to show you how the block element works so what i'm going to do i'm going to add a new paragraph once again so i'm going to again type my code welcome to techwed labs greetings from techwed labs right so when i see the output of this if i go and check the output you can see it is second paragraph it has come to this point now so now if i go and write something for example i will go and write um, hi everyone how are you so if i go and write it will take it as a same line and it will extend how much ever the screen is for example if it goes to the end of the screen and after end of the screen it will come back to the next line so i'm going to show you that just what i'll do is i'm going to take this and i'm going to copy the same thing i'm going to go back and i'll paste it after this now you can tell me what is the difference of the can you see after the last screen i'm going to see here it came to the second line so what does paragraph do or what does block element do is that it takes a new line after the complete window is displayed with all the text and it takes a new line right so this is about block elements yes after block elements we're going to learn something called inline elements now what are inline tags they do not occupy a new line and keep the flow of the document now for example what i'm going to do now is to show what is inline tag what i'm going to do inside a tag for example somewhere here i'm going to add a one more tag called span so inside span i'm going to put again welcome to the course now what happens here is it will be display on the same line if i go and see the output of this can you see this welcome to the course it displayed on the same line it will not take any extra line it will be displayed on the same line now if i go back and remove span save it you can see it got vanished so inline tags are the tags which are used to write something in a part of a line or in a part of a tag now understanding what is html web layout now as i told you earlier the structure of the html web layout now the same thing that is here the first thing is header the last thing is footer header and footer and the left side of it is the navigation bars where you can write as about and all those things whatever you put as a navigation kind of stuff that you can use using nav and the right side that is aside this is actually not so important but still we are going to learn about it again you have different sections different divisions available again you have headers and you have the article also you can see the different this is the web layout of a html page okay so going on let us understand deeply about these commands now what is the first command that is header now header header defines a header for a document or a section i told you already header tag serves as a headline header heading all these things mean the same not it is not a head tag now you don't have to be confused now this header is completely different from the head tag head tag is used to enter the metadata but in header tag it serves as a headline so in an example what i'm going to do now is i'm going to sh show this example on the output now just go i'm going to go to the visual score studio code now now the two different things head is different and header is different so inside body what i'm going to put i'm going to put a tag called as header now inside header i'm going to put as hello everyone now if i go it and save it and open the output you can see hello everyone this is this has become a header not head head is different and header is different okay so after nav after header we are going to learn about nav that is navigation bar now navigation tag can be used to group all navigation tools which consists of link 
for navigating to different parts of the web page or different one altogether. Now, as you can see in many website, navigation bar would be there and when you click on that navigation bar, it will go to the same page, maybe bottom of the page or it, or it contains a link of some other page, right? These are all used in navigation bar. If I see an example of it, what I'm going to do, I'm going to create a list and I'm going to put that uh, example there and how to do that. Now in my Visual Studio Code editor, what I'm going to do after all the paragraphs, what I'm going to add, I'm just going to add NAV. After NAV, I'm going to create an ordered list. And after order list, I'm going to create list elements, maybe LI. Inside LI, I'm going to put um, Karnataka. That is one list name. Second list name I'm going to put as Maharashtra. Third list name I'm going to put as Delhi. So now if I, go, if I save it and go and see the output, you can see list has been created. But what did I tell you? I told you that we have to create links for it. Very simple. What I'm going to do, I'm going to go back and inside li what i'm gonna put anchor tag a after that href equals hash so if i do this now why didn't we get the output because we have made an error now so how to rectify that error this there are few command Properly, we have to write all the commands or else you won't get the output. Now, if I go here, after the list, what I'm going to know, I'm just going to create href equals maybe ash. Ash stays, uh, says that it will remain on the same page. Now, href. Now, this A must be closed after the content. So, if I go and save this now and if I go and see the output, you can see a link has been created. Now, Hashtag means it stays on the same page. I hope you are getting this. Moving on to the next topic, we are going to learn about article tag. Now article tag are uh, usually used to create blog posts and stories, articles as the name suggests. It can be used to display content like an article. So let us see how to do it. Yes. Now I'm the Codeo Studio Code Editor. What I'm going to do is I'm going to remove all of these things. Why? Because we have already learnt about this. I'm going to remove all those things. I'm going to create article now. Now when I create article, you can see the article now. now inside article, I'm going to put a header. Now inside header, I'm going to put a header tags. Now I'm going to put an article such as post title right after post title again i'm gonna use one more uh, h2 tag and put uh, subtitle i'm gonna put the title and the subtitle and info right after this what i'm gonna do i'm gonna close the header now i'm header is closed again i'm gonna put content so in an article as you can see there is a title there's a subtitle and a content so what i'm gonna put i'm gonna put content close here so after this, I am going to close the entire, now this we have to delete it. I am going to close the entire article here. As you can see, I have closed it here. Now if I go and save it and if I go and see the output, now you can see title is here, post title or what I am going to do, I am going to make sure that uh, this comes to center. So what I am going to do, just after this, I am going to add style equals style text align equals center and I have the line center now if I go and save it and if I go and check the output you can see it is in the center now the same thing what I'm going to do, I'm just going to copy this entire thing and I'm going to paste it here. Again for the paragraph, I'm going to paste it here and as you can see, you can see the post title, you can see the subtitle and info and you can see the content. So this is 
used to create a blog post so after learning about article what i'm going to do now is i'm going to create sections for the article so how to do it the section tag section tag defines sections in documents such as chapters headers footers or any other sections of the document so let us see an example so here what i'm going to do is i'm going to create sections for the article so what i'm going to do i'm going to add a tag called section here now for each article i'm going to give different sections so after closing this article i'm going to uh, put section so that article uh, the section is closed and i'm going to create a new article here uh, i'm sorry this must be after section creating an article right you can see this now i've created a section now uh, it doesn't matter now because there's only one section the always the output will be like this now what i'm going to do i'm going to give one more article so for that what going to i'm going to use i'm going to use the same code and put it here and again i'm going to create one more section here for example i'm going to create such as section close it after this i'm gonna scroll down and close the section here now if i go and see the output you can see both of the sections are available this is one this is one section and this is one more section i hope you guys understood this now after learning about section we are going to see something called aside aside is related but not important content for example uh, you have about the author about the designer or the publication and all those things should be there on the screen but it is not so important that it should be displayed on the center or something like that so to include the all these details we are going to use aside tag so to use that we are going to see how to use it now yes so we are on the code editor now now after this section what i'm going to do i'm going to use the tag called aside after aside i'm going to put two contents which is very important what is the two content i'm going to put about author and that is one and one more what i'm going to put publication so if i do this publication if i go and save it after that i have i've closed the tag here after that if i go and see the output i can see about author and publication here right the screen is you can see a and p is out of the screen because the recording it doesn't allow it but no issues you can see the output here right if you want to make it to center very simple what i'm going to do i'm going to copy the entire code here copy this code copy because i'm going to have put style there so copy copy the styles just go and see the output you can see about author and publication you can use this as well right now just like header we have the opposite of header called footer footer is for a section or a document so just like the header tag footer tag allows or acts as a footer for a section or a document that is used to display contents like copyrights terms of conditions all these things can be used as a footer so let us see an example of it now after aside what i'm going to put i'm going to just going to add footer after footer i'm going to add a content that's all folks now if i go and see the output of this i can see the output somewhere here right so i'll make it to center so that you guys can see it i'm just going to copy the style code here text align equal center and if i see this you can see that the footer is available here right so this is about the footer all right we have completed the three chapters so we are going into the fourth chapter that is doc type html so what is doc type html i already told you the doc type html tells the browser that html file is about to run so that is why we are going to use doc type html and this is the syntax of doc type html so you can see you can read the contents there doc type declaration conveys to the browser that this is a document type i already told you earlier about it it is used only once at the beginning of the web file before any other text yes correct it cannot be used more than once or you should not be used more than once because once is more than enough to tell the browser that html is coming up so declaration is not case sensitive any of the html 
elements are not case sensitive but we use a standard as lower case right so but in case of doc type html you can use capital letter so that it, it specifies the document type so word html in this declaration is for html5 the exclamatory mark is carried on from html4 so this is html5 so html declaration means it is for html5 so how to do that we i showed you the structure of the html can be done in visual studio code by applying a simple key how to do it we'll just go back to visual studio code now we are in the visual studio code i told you simple thing earlier what is that when you click exclamatory mark and when you click on tab the entire structure of the html is displayed you can see the doc type here as well the doc type html as well so when you you can save it using control s great we learned about what is doc type html now it is very important for us to learn this chapter that is elements in html so now you can see there are some h1 h2 h3 h4 h5 h6 now all these things are nothing but headings right so there are six types of headings available in html so let us see each one by one so how to do it now i am in the code editor i am going to use all the six html headings so first html heading h1 i'm going to put hi there how are you right so when you save it and when you see the output you can see hi there how are you now this is the first h1 tag now h1 tag is little big why because this is h1 this is the first heading that is why the font size is always big in h1 now i'm gonna put h2 again i'm gonna copy the same thing i want to see the difference i want you guys to see the difference paste it and see the output right refresh it and you can see that this is much less in size right why because this is h1 and this is h2 there's a difference in the size of it likewise there are around six html headings now i can see h3 i can put again i paste the same thing same tag content again h4 paste it again i'm gonna put h5 paste it so there are six different headings if i go there and if i go there and see the output of it here you can see it decreases its size every time now why does it decrease every time because for each headings there are default sizes available h1 is the biggest h6 is the smallest heading of html now after html or after headings we are gonna see paragraph now we have already used this before right but in this we are gonna go in some detail so this tag is used to display content like a paragraph of few lines yes 100 percent true so how how do you do you have to go to visual studio code now i am in the studio code now so what i'm gonna put after the headings i'm gonna put paragraph right in that paragraph i'm gonna put welcome from techwit labs go there and see the output of it now refresh it and see the output welcome from TechWet lab so this is a paragraph you can see different the size the size and also the font is different why because this is a paragraph now what i'm going to i'm going to put some uh, random text how to put it when you put lorem and press tab it will take a random uh, default text and it doesn't mean anything and you can see lorem ipsum all these things has been put paragraph paragraph has been created go there refresh it once again and you can see lorem ipsum dollar has been put here now after the entire line is reached it's gonna be in the next line so this is what is paragraph now after paragraph we are going to learn about division tag now just like how we learned section tag a division tag is a tag which is used to form divisions on the web page it just acts as a container of a data now for an example you can see it here paragraph is there we have created a division for a paragraph 
for uh, again one more paragraph we have created a division here if i have to see the output of it i'll go back back to visual studio code here what i'm going to do now is i'm just going to add division here right after this division after every paragraph i'm going to add a new division so here also i'm going to add a division take this division put it after the p tag here so if you go and see the output now refresh it there's nothing much difference why because division it creates a division for this paragraph and it creates a division for this paragraph so there is a dif difference between this and this paragraph so that is what your division tag do yes i told you already that division tag without any styling there is no much difference as you can see it is just as the same as paragraph 1 and paragraph 2 so now this is very important add an image so to add an image we are going to use a command that use a command or tag called image tag now this image tag has three different attributes the first attribute is the source attribute source attribute is the address of the image where you have stored that image on the computer system you have to give that address there and second is height and weight to adjust the size height and weights must be given in P px and all those things and the third thing is alt alternative text so suppose for example the image which you have given has been deleted now there is nothing coming on the web page now so what you have to use is if you use alt it's going to display an alternate text and it says that image does you can write any text over there if the image is not found then the image doesn't display now we are going to see an example of how to do it now as you can see here there is a commands all this h1 to division all this tags are already previously done so we are going to use image now so how to do it first we have to make sure that the image is already available in the folder which you want to take so here if you can see i have already there is an image which is already available so i will have to go and see the properties of the image the image is in .jpg file so what i'm going to do now is techwed labs is the name of the image i'll go here and i'm going to add img space source equals i'll put the image name techwedlabs.jpg after that i'm going to put height or before putting that i'm just going to put this now let us see if we get the output i'll go and see the output here refresh as you can see the image is already here now what i'm going to do i'm going to change the heights of that for example i'm going to put height equals or height 10 px if i go and see the output height is little bit increased so as you can see you can put height and weight as well and also you can put an alternate text for example alternate text what you can put alternate equals to no image if you put this what happens that your image will be displayed but what happens when you maybe you can change the name as like this now there is no image called techwed lab.jpg so what you will do i will go and see the output now you can see there is no image so but i have given an alternate text called as no image i hope you can see the output here now again if i go and put techwed lab.jpg and see the output i can see the image why because the image exists in the folder which i am going to take the image from now i can add height as well now for out had i height equals 50 px width equals 50 px now if i do this go save it and see the output you can see that it has become small now as you can see it has become small now what i'm going to put i'm going to put 500 here i'm going to put 500 here and see the output of the image now i'll go here refresh it now you can see that the image is too big it is 500 px so this is how you can play with your image tag yeah so we learnt about uh, image tag so now we are going to uh, move forward with br tag now what is br br is nothing but breaking the statement and the following uh, content will be displayed on a new line so let us see how does this go as you can see i had already typed the 
paragraph uh, content here there's so many content over here so what i'm going to put i'm just i'm just going to put a br tag here br and what does it do when i save it and go it and see the output of it you can see that it ends the line over here and in the next line the entire content will be displayed now again i'm going to put a br tag somewhere maybe after here i'm going to put it somewhere br here and i'm going to save it again again i'm going to see the output and you can see that it ends the line over there so i hope you guys understood it so this is what br tag does yes here also you can see in the previous command we have given br here again br here if you see the output again it takes br here breaks the line here it breaks the line here so next we are going to learn about horizontal line how to put an horizontal line between the contents or between the tags now how to do it now we'll take an example of the previous command that is we are tag we have there are two paragraphs here so we are going to put horizontal line in between them so how to do it now i'm going to go to visual studio code yes as you can see here in the paragraph we have used br so what i'm going to do i'm just going to remove the br here i'm just going to remove the br instead of br we are going to use hr to give an horizontal line so somewhere here i'm going to give it as hr width i'm going to specify the width equals maybe i'm going to give it as 50 px save it go back and see the output as you can see there's an image over here so what i'm going to do i'm going to delete the image first i'm going to delete the image first now if i go and see the output there's a line drawn over here right now always px doesn't work so what you have to do is you can use a different thing called as equals instead of px we are going to use it as percentage so like this i'm going to use it as percentage and i'm going to save it go back refresh it you can see there's an horizontal line over there right so again if i have to display this what i'm going to do again p right close it p or remove the p now because we haven't closed it yet yes now if you go and refresh it you can see there's an horizontal line and also there is a content available over there so hr is used to spread out a horizontal line if i give it as 100% you can see the difference now there's only this much this is 75% if i go and refresh it is for 100% so this is what hr does so now after learning about hr we are going to learn about a tag so a tag this tag is called as anchor tag now it has an attribute called href now what does this do there will be text available so this will create a link to the next page or to the uh, content in the same page right so if you give href equals www.google.com and give a text when you click on the text it will redirect to the google.com page so let us see how it can be done so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to add a tag called a href equals http colon www dot techwid labs dot com then what I'm gonna do first I have to give inverted commas here close it like this and now techwid labs so when I click on this text called techwid labs it will redirect to www dot techwid labs dot com if i go back and check the output you can see there's a link underlined here so when you click on this link it will be directed to our website that is techwidlabs.com so i hope you guys understood how to give anchor tag so if i go back and you can give any name here you can give any website or if you want to give google.com you can give for example www.google.com go back again what i'm going to do come back refresh if I go and click on Packet Labs, it will redirect to google.com. Right? I hope you guys understood this. Now, after learning few elements, we are going to learn which most important thing that is lists. Now, there are three different kinds of lists. Sorry, two different kinds of lists. First is ordered and unordered. 
ol represents ordered that means it is displayed with the numbers like 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 in unordered list the list items are displayed as bullets so let us see an example of how to do it so here what i'm going to do i'm going to do ordered list first so what for ordered list ol after that i'm going to give list element list element first list element i'm going to give it as something like union territory union territory and after that i'm going to give it as states states if i go save it and if i go it and refresh it here you can see it is with numbers right so this is called as ordered list right so what is an unordered list what i'm going to do i'm going to come down and i'm going to give ul ul stands for unordered list so if i do the same thing here just like if i go and copy the same thing here copy and paste it here now you will be able to see the difference refresh uh -huh. now you can see this is the ordered list and this is the unordered list in ordered list there are numbers assigned to each list item but in unordered list there will be bullets assigned to each list item right Yes, as you can see here, ordered list we have given as TechWid Lab services, list, internships, online training, workshops, projects. So this is an unordered list, sorry, ordered list. I just showed you the output of it. Now if I go to the next, this is the output. It gives out with a number, right? So this is an unordered list, right? Now this will display with a bullet. So that is the major difference between the ordered list and unordered list. So we have learned about different types of elements available in HTML. Now we are going to learn about HTML forms. Now this is quite important because you guys would have seen Google Forms where you feed the data, right? So form is used to used as a way of filling and uploading the data. Just like Google Forms, you enter the data and the data is collected on the server. So now the form tag has two attributes. One is action and one is method. Now action method is nothing but whenever you enter the details inside the form, what happens when you click the submit button what happens after that is what action tells you about but this is a different topic now this topic we're going to do uh, in our future classes and method method is nothing but how do you want to retrieve that data do you want to use the get method or post method these two are based on php now when we learn php we are going to study more detailly about it but right now we are going to see how form is used and what is the structure of the form Yes. Here, as you can see in our last programs, we did all these commands, right? So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to erase all these commands first. We don't want this. We just want the form. Now how to do the form? Form. This is the syntax. Form. Right? Here you can use action is equal to space method is equal to. Right? So this is the structure of the form and if you want to see the output you can go here refresh it nothing nothing's there why because we have not given any entries there so this is the syntax of the form this is the syntax of the form now inside form we have to put some input materials this tag now input tag is used to get the input in various types that includes text password emails telephone choices etc so there are different types of inputs which we can use in forms now here label tag now label this tag is used to display a label for each input for example when you go to facebook.com you will be asked for your email and a password now on beside of email there is an email written and you will have a box and after that you will have a password there also will get a Pa uh, password block when you click name you write your name after that you'll give your password then there's a submit button when you submit it it will go to your login page so let us see how to do it but before that let us see all the different attribute values available for input type the first type tell this type is used for a telephone number if the input is telephone number we are going to use type as tell in search search is used as a search field if the info field is search we are going to use search url url is used when entered data should be url likewise there are on different type values 
input types which are available inside forms you can use all those things to make sure your form requires or you want the details from the user on based on what you exactly want right so this is the input type attribute values so now now we are going to see the first type of input uh, that is input type text as you can see the syntax here this tag is used to input data in the form of a text if you want the data to be in the form of a text we are going to use type equals text right so it has two major attributes name this attribute is used to specify the name of the input element we are going to uh, we are going to specify the name of the input using name attribute again placeholder text put in this attribute will be displayed until the user clicks on the cursor for example if you have created an input type if the placeholder is enter a name in that box enter a name will be displayed but when you click on that box this enter a name will be disappeared and you will you will be allowed to enter your original name so let us see this how to do now i already told you this is the syntax of the form first form what i'm going to do i'm going to put input type equals text text we are going to display the text again name equals first name name equals first name right placeholder equals i'm going to put enter a name or enter first name and then close the input save it go back and refresh it now you can see there's something called enter first name now you can type your name here right i'm going to type my name as nithin but this doesn't give you a proper detail that this is a properly a name so what you should do you can use the label tag here just like label for equals we are going to give f name close it and put first name right for f name means that the name is first name we have specified a name with the first name right so we are going to use the same inside here so once you do this save it and go back refresh and check it you can see first name will be displayed here and you can see the form element where you can type it right so this is about input type text now the second type of input type is email now this tag is used to take email id as an input that must contain a domain name like at abc.com or at least at for few browsers right so these are all the email types so how to do email now we'll just go back and see how to do it yes i have already given the input type at text what i'm going to do i'm going to again put input this time i'm going to put type email right so again i'm going to put name equals email i'm going to specify this with an email placeholder should be with xyz at gmail dot com if i do this if i go this and see the output now you can see that xyz dot com is available here but you don't have the label so again you have to put the label just copy this sorry just copy this after this place this but here it should be email and also we have given email as a specified name so i'm going to put email again save it go back and refresh yes you can see it here but i want it to be displayed in the next line so what i'm going to do i'm just going to add after this i'm going to add br so now if you go i already told you about br now you can see first name is here and the email is here i hope you guys understood about email now right now after knowing about name and email we we'll obviously should know about the password right so this tag is used to input a password and any input to this field will be displayed at bullet points and the actual password will not be shown on the screen whenever you type the password the password will be in the bullet form you cannot see the password so for the type of the password is password so let us go back and see the password type yes now how to input a password type 
what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna add input type equals password space name equals password. I'm gonna specify it with password. After that, there's no placeholder for a password. So save it, go back, refresh. You can see the password. When you type it, you can see it is in dot for dotted format and you cannot see the actual password written there. But there's no label. So what we are gonna do, we're gonna put a label now. Just copy this label after the statement, place it. This is a password. So password. Again, I've given a password as a name over there. So I'll specify the password there. Save, refresh, password is available here. If I want to make it to the next line, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna add BR here. Now go back and see the output. You can see that it is in a different line and you can see that the password written is in a coded form and you cannot see the password, right? You can see different outputs here. This is the code for the, just like I showed you the output, this is the code for first name, email and password. You can see different outputs here, right? So now we're gonna learn about input type equals radio. Now radio, have you heard of radio buttons? Now radio buttons are the buttons where you will select one out of some other. Maybe there, there are few different options for you. You want to select one option, for that you're gonna use radio, right? It has two values, again same as name and a value. But this time we're gonna use value attribute. Now value attribute has to have unique value for each option, right? For value should be like male, female, others, right? It should have unique option, but the name should always be the same, right? We're gonna see some example of it, right? The example of uh, radio button, what I'm gonna put, I'm gonna put input first, type equals, radio after radio what i'm gonna put name equals oh i'm gonna put it as gender after gender i'm gonna put it as value the value must be unique so what i'm gonna put i'm gonna put first as male after that i'm gonna put input i'm just gonna copy this or else just take this copy this paste it inside in spite of male i'm gonna put as female again paste it i'm gonna put it as others now you are gonna get radio buttons and you can select only one sorry in radio buttons i can go back refresh you can see the radio buttons available here if i click one if i click one more you cannot select all the three things at once you can only select one thing at once, right? But there's no label, so I'm gonna put a label now. Just copy the label command here. You can see the label command. Copy, paste. So this is the gender, right? So I'm gonna put it as gender. Here also I've given the name as gender, the specified name as gender. So I'm gonna put it as gender. Control save, then refresh. You can see the gender now. If you want to be displayed in the next line, just add BR before the statements. When you add BR, you can it can be displayed on the next line. So this is about radio buttons. Again, if you want to add, uh, maybe if you want to add each label, for example, for mail, you want to add one more label, all those things, just copy this. And after this, you can add it as mail and after mail you can add one more command and after adding one more command you can add fem uh, female here and after female you can add others here now when you control save and go back and see the output now we can see gender male female and others right you can select only one why only one because you have selected you have given different values for each radio button but if the values are same then what happens is you can select all the things right it, it will not be unique for example i'm going to put mail here right control save go back refresh and when you click on mail 
when you click on female you can see now what happens i'm going to give values as same for this also male all the values are same all the values are same name i'm going to give it as different gender 1 gender 2 gender 3 refresh you can see all these three things are selected now we don't want it so what i'm going to do i it this name has to be same for all the things and this must be different so there is a biggest difference in radio buttons so i hope you guys understood yes now we just finished the radio buttons now we are going to learn about check boxes you yes, have seen check boxes where terms and conditions you have to tick this mark you have to tick that mark right those things are called as check box now this tag can be used to select multiple options as a checklist and also a consent button for agreement of turn terms and conditions so let let us check how do we do it so this is the syntax of it input type equals check box name equals agree so we'll go back to visual studio code and check the output of it now here i'm going to add an input type equals check box after check box right if i do this if i go and see the output of this you can see there is a check box available you can tick it and you can untick it this is what is check box and you can give a label to it as well you can go there you can just copy this label and i told you you can use br right after this you can use br again paste the label this is not gender right so this is check box check box in the servers i agree to terms and candy shans when you do this you go back refresh it you can see i agree to terms and conditions you can tick it and you can untick it so this is what is form you can see different form elements first name email password gender you have done you have done i agree to terms and conditions right now the important thing right for every form there is a submit button now in html you even even you can create a submit button the syntax is given below and let us read it out this tag is used to create click buttons and generally used in forms as a submit button so we have to use button type equal submit and the tag content over there and the closing mark of the button so let us see how it is done now i'm going to add button type equals submit and after that i'm going to add the content that is submit that is inside the button i'm going to get submit so this is the syntax of it if i go there and refresh it now i can see there's a submit button so when you click on it there's an error why because we have not linked anything so that is why it is an error we can type all of these things and click on the submit button so this is how you do it right you don't require a label here why because we can directly this is a button type this is a button this is not an input type so there's a difference between an input type and a button this button has a content already that is submit in in place of label we are using content directly here i hope you guys understood about the button here and sometimes you want to you want the user to fill all the fields which are available on the form you don't want the user to miss any field right to make sure that uh, if you want to if you want the user to fill all the things you can add a, a small line that is required now what does this mean mean that the if you if the user press the submit button without entering into any field what happens is it says a error say say it has required it wants the field to be written not emptied so the user has to fill the button over there or has to fill the text over there right so we can do this how we can do this here what can i do is if i go back to the top i can see the first name right so what i can do in the input type itself i am going to add here as required now if i do this and go back and refresh 
if I click on submit, you can see please fill out this field. It doesn't say for any other things, but it says for first thing. Why? Because we have added required for the first name. Now, if you put for the, all these names, it will tell you to put for all these names. For example, if I go there, if I put refresh, I click on submit. Now I'll, I'm going to put this again. I'm going to submit, but it says the second field is missing. Please fix, fill it out. So that means without the user filling all the things, the submit button will not work. It will tell that it is required and you have to fill all of the things available on the form. This can be usually uh, useful when you are creating, when you are doing surveys, when you are want to create a project, right? All these things can be used. Okay, guys, that's it for today. I hope you guys understood me. I, I hope you guys understood all the concepts which we learned today. We're going to see you in the next class. Until then, thank you. Thank you very much.